click here to end simulation 18152518820. That was the subject of the email I'd just received. No message, no joke, just a link to click. I peeked around the room, looking for the culprit of yet another practical joke. Our floor was massive, just about big enough to house about 300 cubicles. But Robert, who'd sent me the message, was nowhere in sight. One of my neighbours chuckled. I diverted my attention towards the sound. Maybe they were in on it too. It wasn't uncommon for us to make our own fun, as our boss hardly paid attention, and work was fairly monotonous, always tapping away at our company-provided computers, using their own brand keyboards and headsets, all marked with a simple logo AP. Just as I was about to trash the email, Robert returned to the floor. He gave me a glance and smiled. The same mischievous look I'd seen a hundred times before. He was a funny guy, always inventing his own harmless pranks for a cheap laugh. So, once I'd practically confirmed that the email was his doing, and not some malicious virus, I clicked the link. Do you confirm the termination of 18152518820? I sighed, a tired smile stretching across my face. What ridiculous prank could it be? I clicked yes and looked over at his cubicle. Robert had frozen in place. His smile had vanished, and he just stared in my general direction, not moving a muscle. Rob, what are you doing? I asked, still awaiting the punchline of the joke. Then, he simply vanished. He didn't leave. He didn't duck down behind his desk. No, he simply disappeared without a trace. I stood up from my chair and walked over, confused and mildly terrified. None of my co-workers had flinched at the event. All of them just sat there in their cubicles, diligently typing away, filling the office with background noise. What are you doing? Our break hasn't started yet, Jennifer said as she noticed me pacing around. You... Didn't see that? I asked. See what? Robert. He just vanished into thin air. Who? It could have been an elaborate prank. But even if the whole office was in on it, I couldn't logically explain how an office worker just seemed to be erased from existence. While I contemplated different theories, I checked under his desk and looked around for suspicious-looking colleagues. In the midst of my search for answers, a ping sounded from my computer, alerting me to yet another email. I rushed back and opened my inbox, hoping Robert had sent me something, even if nothing more than laughing at how easily he had tricked me. But instead of Robert, Jennifer was marked as the sender. Click here to end simulation 10514. Alright Jen, very funny, but please stop, I said a bit too loud. I garnered the attention of my neighbouring co-workers, who asked me to keep quiet. Jennifer came over with an annoyed look on her face. We'd never been particularly close, but she wasn't one to shy away from a good prank though she would never contain her emotions enough to go through with it without laughing. This was the first time I'd seen her genuinely annoyed. Look, I don't have time for this. What's the deal with you today? I pointed to the email, demanding an explanation, but she kept her facade going. I didn't send that, she claimed. Then why does it mark you as the sender? She sat down in my chair to take a closer look. 
Huh? That's weird, she said as she clicked on the link. No, wait. I tried to stop her, but she'd already confirmed the termination. And, just like Robert, she disappeared without a trace. I stumbled back in shock. In the span of a minute, two of my colleagues had simply ceased to exist. I stared at my suddenly empty chair with a horrified expression on my face. By then, my co-workers had started to look at me with concerned eyes, oblivious to what had just happened. Before I got a chance to explain myself, another three pings were heard from my computer. Three new emails, three new numbers. Click to end simulation 41225 from Dave. Click here to end simulation 112935 from Alice. Click here to end simulation 112524 from Alex. They had come from three of my co-workers, all of them unaware, their heads still glued to their computer screens, diligently tapping away at their keyboards. James, my office, please. I turned around to see my boss. He'd taken note of my frantic behaviour and wanted to check up on me. You want to tell me what's going on? He asked as he closed the door. Sir, sir, Robert and Jenny, they, they just disappeared, I stuttered. He sighed. Sit down, please. In my agitated state, I wanted to refuse. I wanted to run out and prove to him that I hadn't gone crazy. But suddenly, I just found myself sitting, obeying him without even thinking. So, they're gone, hmm? I take it you saw their numbers? Their numbers? You know about this, I asked. James, this is the end of phase one. That's why they sent you the numbers. They're shutting us down, he said, matter-of-factly. I looked at my boss. He still smiled, unfazed by the idea that two of his employees had just been erased, and that three would soon follow. Sir, what the hell is going on here? What is phase one? Why are we being shut down? Are we all being fired? He chuckled in response. Fired is a nice way of putting it, but it's not entirely how it works here. James, why don't you tell me what we do at this company? He asked. The question was bizarre considering the situation. We're a... Uh, we're... Uh, we type into the computers? We... I couldn't give a straight answer. I thought back, firm memories of typing at my keyboard, but no memory as to why. It had always been something I did on autopilot. I never thought about the task at hand. He noticed my confusion. Exactly, James. And... How long have you been with us? How long? I've been here for... I... I didn't know. I'd never thought about the time past. It could have been years, or it could have been a week. I... don't understand. I finally said, with terror in my voice. My boss put a comforting hand on my shoulder. He'd been sitting in the chair just in front of me, but now suddenly, he stood behind me. We couldn't perfectly reconstruct your mind, but you were a great start, a perfect way to prove that our company had a great future. What the hell are you talking about? Think back, James. What brought you here? 
How did we meet? What's my name? The barrage of questions rendered me speechless for a moment. I couldn't recall even the most basic information. You're my boss. Your name is... It's... I didn't know. He went to grab me a glass of water to calm me down. I grabbed it with trembling hands and realized I couldn't remember the last time I drank anything, or ate for that matter. You remember going to the hospital? You had a malignant brain tumor. You came to us for help, he said calmly. I... I don't remember. We couldn't fix you, James. We didn't have the tools yet, but we did our best to put your mind in a place where it could keep living. You said you wanted to keep living. I stared at the window behind my boss's desk. Its curtains were bright from the sun shining inside, but that was just it. Beyond the light, I couldn't see anything. No streets outside, no sky, nothing. My mind slowly started to settle on the idea that everything around me had been specifically made only to distract me from the truth that nothing existed beyond the boundaries of our office. My co-workers, they're not real. I'm not real either. I basically screamed in panic as reality set in. No, 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 James. Of course you're real. You're just as real as myself. But you're not exactly... physical. It takes some time for the mind to accept the loss of its body. But don't worry, we're still working on that. The loss of my body. What did that even mean? I looked down, still seeing my hands, my legs... Everything where it was supposed to be, yet the messages I'd received, and simulation, had been firmly locked in my mind. I know it's a lot to take in, but you signed the contracts. You said you wanted to take part in the trials, and though they weren't as successful as we'd hoped, we still made progress. The thing is, James, adults have lost their plasticity their brains just won't adapt to a new environment, which is why we've moved on to, well, younger subjects. People with more malleable minds. What the hell are you talking about? You were phase one, but it's time to move on. He didn't give me a chance to ask any more questions. I simply found myself standing outside the office door. I pulled it open in anger, ready to unleash my boss. But behind the door, I found nothing but a brick wall. My co-workers still sat in their cubicles, ignoring the commotion going on around them. They weren't real. They never had been. They were just trapped in a bizarre simulation alongside myself. But whether or not they were human once, I didn't know. I heard more pings emitting from my computer. Dozens, if not hundreds of emails flowing in by the second. Emails, numbers, all asking me to terminate various simulations. I started clicking on each, desperately looking for my own number trying to figure out a way to end the nightmare. After a few moments of manic clicking, I looked up from my cubicle. I was alone. Yet, the emails kept coming. Thousands of numbers, none of them mine. But I kept clicking. I kept terminating simulation after simulation, never finding my own. Then, I stopped. I realized that all of the emails had been sent from people whose simulation I had ended. Which meant, 
maybe I'd sent up my own number to someone, even if I couldn't remember it. I clicked on the sent tab of my email to find only a single message. Click here to end simulation 10113519. I clicked on it, but it didn't prompt a confirmation message. In fact, nothing happened. Only the receiver of the message had access, but the recipient field had been censored, meaning I had no idea who held my fate in their hands. Which is why I'm writing here. I'm not sure if the internet reaches outside of this simulation, or if everyone reading this is simply part of this virtual hellhole. Whatever the case, if you received my number, I'm begging you. Please terminate this simulation. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs>